Get out the way, who got a watch, who got the time, I'm raising the clock Even if my feelings grind don't stop, got big dreams, want big rocks I got plans, who got talk, heard it's real cheap but it's really gold cost I'm trying to get these ends, building bios with my friends I'm about handling my business, no time for stress over bullshit You think success is an option, I'm trying to get this shit popping like woo, Big moves, my rules Y'all heavy on the tweeting I'll disappear a whole season like woo. Who said they looking for me? I'm a make Hey D Marie TV family So everything I say is alleged It's my opinion and it is for entertainment purposes only So season 9 episode 4 A Ready to Love is already getting crazy <laughs> Child It's already getting crazy They Tempers is already flaring This group right here keeps it popping so the episode starts out tommy's in the lounge with the ladies this episode and he's saying to them everything that we say in the lounge stays in the lounge and he gives them a directive that this week he wants them to start getting intimate he wants the ladies to take the men out and to have some dates and spend time with people in intimate spaces so take them to your home take them to your favorite place that you like to go hang out or eat or take them around family whatever you choose to do it needs to be something that is important to you a space that you value and he wants the relationships and the and the to build and some intimacy to start building between the couples okay so that's the directive for the week Everybody looks amazing. Of course, I've always said this is a beautiful bunch of women. Aesthetically, they're beautiful. But a lot of these women, I won't say a lot, some of these women have some issues that are becoming very apparent. <laughs> it started to peek out a little bit last episode. Well, this episode, they just gonna say to hell with it, okay? And it's coming right on out. I think Tommy is kind of pushing this group in a way that they haven't pushed the groups in a while because they started out with the two different mixers in the beginning and now the intimacy is something that usually comes towards the end of this process he's pulling it forward so that they can start digging a little bit deeper and getting intimate earlier in the process which is really going to test some of these people and some of the, the, I would say some of the flaws, I wouldn't even call them flaws, they're just characteristics about certain people that are going to clash and it doesn't work. And these characteristics are likely why they find it so hard to find love, even though they're stunningly beautiful people on the outside, there's some things that are not quite right internally with how they handle relationships. And that's what you're going to start to see. Now, you know that there was supposed to be an additional man on this season and he didn't show up. He backed out. Uh, that was Glenn. And so because Glenn backed out, Tommy at this lounge meeting brings in a new male contestant to try to even it out a little bit, you know, and his name is Justin. He's a PE teacher. He's handsome. He's a handsome guy. Um, and so the ladies are also going to get to meet and date Justin this week for the first time. So the first uh, scene as far as the date, so the first dating scene is going to be Alexis, 32-year-old operations director who also referees basketball. She set, she set up a date with Rashina, Will, William, and Lamar. And she brings them to the gym where she's going to be refereeing basketball games between Rashina and William and Lamar and Will. And so they're playing and just having a good time. She's refereeing. It's, it's a really fun date. William can actually ball. Like, William just looks kind of dorky to me. He's the comedian and has the three kids. And, it, you know, I, don't, I didn't get much from William. But as he's playing ball, he looks more attractive. Like, seeing him in his athletic space just makes him look a little bit more manly and strong to me. So I really dug that. It's nice to put them in different environments so you, you can see, you know, different sides of him. Because he's usually just quiet and, you know, doesn't have much to say. But on the court, he talking smack. He balling, you know, he's shooting from the three-point line. I was like, okay. <laughs> I 
okay, William, I see you. So that was fun. Now, Rashina first sits down with Lamar and William. Now, Lamar and William are two of the men who are like, in my opinion, a little hypersexual when it comes to their conversations too early in the game. So Rashina's telling them when it comes to her, her relationships usually are three plus years or more. And they turn that into a conversation about Oh, you talking about three people or three years? Like a threesome type of situation. Again, it's too much. Like that is, it, they just lay it on heavy. Both of these men tend to lay on heavy when it comes to those conversations. But because the conversation went that way, Rashina just basically is not interested in either one of these men. Not at all. Now, Alexis and William are on the court. They're just kind of shooting the ball. And they're having a more mature conversation really digging in and getting to the root of some stuff so they can figure out if they're compatible so alexis asks william what's your most intimate relationship today and he tells her i've been married before and i did both of those for the wrong reason now that's a lot <laughs> in one statement that is a lot then he says and you have to you know give people grace you have to you know let them make mistakes and i just for me two marriages three kids and you couldn't make it work with either of your children's mothers that is weird to me that's weird however I don't know how old he was when he got married I don't know the timing in between the marriages this all could have been in the span of a year or two when he was super young I don't know so I would want to dig into that conversation a little bit but to marry somebody twice for the wrong reasons and you still can't manage to make it work with either of your children's mothers, that worries me about William. Why is that? And so I love the fact that Alexis gets in. She's asking them the real hard questions and she's having them open up and speak to kind of who they are and she's really trying to dig in and learn about them. And I like that about her. It's not just about her being cute and smiling and giggling and stuff. She, she just goes in and she's very comfortable having these conversations, which I think it, you have to be. If you're really serious about being committed, you can't go in there, oh, you know, trying to hide your hand and I don't care if I get married or not. If you want to be married, you should never make a statement like that. You should come in hot. I want to be married. I want this. I want that. You should say it. You should say it. So if someone flees because that ain't what they want, that's not what God has in store for you. Always be honest about what you want and what your heart desires. And I like the fact that she's just open and she's having the conversations. And this is a much different conversation than what we just saw with Rashina, Will, and Lamar. So Alexis then switches with Rashina and she's sitting with Will and Lamar and she asks them the same question. What is, what is intimacy in a relationship like for you? And Will said his starts with his intimacy with his relationship with God. She really liked that answer. I think that kind of opened her up a little bit more to Will. Lamar is talking about intim intimacy with regards to, of course, sex. This man, I don't know if it's just been a while or what it is, but it is like that's the only thing on his mind. This whole season, that's all he is capable of giving is conversations about threesomes and just something sexual related and that's it's just too much and I, I think clearly the women have had it up to here with him he is not a man of substance he has given nothing of himself there's nothing for them to even they they don't know anything about him to compare him to someone else because he only really talks about sex and if you try to delve into his world a little bit more he shuts down and he doesn't want to discuss it so I do not see this going very well for Lamar I think Lamar his days are numbered because he does not have anything of substance to offer any of these women so the next date is Rashina she's meeting up with Justin the new guy on the show and they're going to a dog park um, called Mutt and they're going to have some drinks and so they bring their dogs and they go to the dog park. Now, Justin's dog is very hyperactive. He's all over the place. He's really doing a lot. So it makes it hard for Justin to kind of focus in the beginning because he's trying his best to control the dog. But luckily, they're able to sit down and have 
a conversation at the table and the dog calms down and they're able to focus in on each other. So they're talking about um, kind of who they are and what they want out of relationships. And Rashina has two boys. She does not want to have any more kids. And she's older than Justin, who's 34, who has no kids. So it's very important to her to get to the bottom of, listen, how do you feel about dating an older person who has children? And I don't want any more kids. And so he said he is resolved with not having, you know, kids at this point, And he doesn't have a problem with that. I don't know if I believe him. You know what I'm saying? I don't know that I believe that. 34 is very young for a man with regards to a child, having children. Men can have kids <laughs> forever. You know, women at 35, it tends to be a higher risk pregnancy because your eggs are in fact aging. So I just, I would, if I were her, I would definitely try to meet someone who has their own kids, they're grown, or someone who does not want kids. Not someone who wants kids but never had them, but now they're resolved with not having them because those feelings can come up. That goes in ways. And I say that as a person who had children later in life, that comes and goes. There's there's years that I'm, I was just craving a baby nonstop. And then there's other years where I'm like, I'm good. And then it comes back. I'm craving babies again. So it just depends kind of on where a person is in life. And a man who falls in love with the woman and he does not have kids and she's capable of having them, that conversation in my mind is going to come up again because he's going to want a baby by the woman he's in love with. Point blank period. That's just me and my opinion. Y'all tell me what y'all think. They ended up having really good in-depth conversation. He's a very intelligent, well-spoken man, good conversation. And Rashina, he said um, he was really nervous and she calmed him down and she made him feel relaxed. And he was kind of surprised at, at the chemistry and how well that went. And they really do have kind of a, 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 an attraction to each other that both of them have picked up on. Loved, loved, loved this day. Loved it. That's what you want. When you leave, you want to go, you want to leave like, yeah, I can't wait till you call. You know, that's how you want to feel. Not running from somebody like Lamar because you never want to hear from him again. <laughs> Now, Leyland is the cybersecurity consultant. She set up a meeting with Tommy in the lounge one-on-one. And that's, you know, normally when there's either a problem or someone is ready to go. So she comes in, she meets with Tommy, and she tells him that she's having some personal issues at home. And she's feeling a little bit overwhelmed. And she needs to pull back a little bit um, from the show so she can handle whatever's going on with her. She doesn't say what it is, but he did tell her he'll give her a week off. And so she's not going to be kind of involved in the dates for the getting intimate week. So Vanessa is going to Chaz's house and they're going to have a date. And he invites Patrice, Alonzo, Vanessa, and Koshia to his house to have the date. But little do they all know that Patrice also invited the new guy, Justin. Even Chaz didn't know. So that was a little um, kind of monkey wrench that she threw up in the game. So they're all getting there. Everything's going well. And then Justin comes in. You can tell Chaz is kind of like, he. I, you could tell he was kind of thrown off a little bit by it. But he came around. But he was a little, at first he was a little like, Ugh, you know. So, And I get it if you don't know somebody's coming to your house. But he is a new contestant. He hasn't met the group as a whole. None of the men. So this was Patrice's way of just introducing him into the group. Um, overall and getting to spend some time with them during the getting more intimate week. So I thought it was pretty cool of Patrice to do that. Chaz has a beautiful home. He has pink curtains up, which I thought, what the hell? Like what man has pink curtains up? I mean, his house is beautifully decorated, uh, but I just, that was weird. But other than that, his home is absolutely gorgeous. He has amazing taste. Um, it does not look like a man decorated it. <laughs> <laughs> and y'all know what I'm talking about. <laughs> it just doesn't look like you. I mean, he has to have impeccable style to have done all this on his own. And I guess it's possible, but it just looks like there has been, there's a woman's touch to his home, but very beautiful home. Everybody's having a good time, getting to know each other, laughing, getting along. Now y'all know Koshia has had kind of a, a issue with Will. She didn't really take to Will. Will kind of annoyed her. 
then she had her interaction with Alonzo where she gets up and storms off about the conversation that they were having when she felt the conversation was too sexual. She didn't appreciate it, but then when they were talking about it, she got up and she stormed off. So they're both at Chaz's house, and so Alonzo, understanding that there was some tension the last time they were together, he pulls her aside, and he's telling her, listen, I apologize if I offended you in any way, and she tells him, I accept your apology, that's fine and so they're able to get past their last kind of argument um that they had so that they can have a good night along with everybody else and not bring any negative tension into this situation so when patrice is introducing justin he says i'm from mississippi and my granddad used to be the mayor of winston chas is like why you leading with that bro why you leading with that And I just think Chaz was a little bit intimidated by Justin's presence, you know. Justin is, he, by all accounts, is, you know, a a nice looking guy. And I just feel like anytime new, more, more men or more women come in, there may be some people who are already there who may feel intimidated about that. And you just saw a peak of that from Chaz, but he quickly got over it. So Chaz, Vanessa, Koshia, and Justin are playing dominoes and they having a good time. And then you have Patrice and Alonzo in the kitchen. And Alonzo's telling Patrice he wants to watch movies with her and all this other stuff. And she loves him. She's just laughing. He's He keeps her laughing and she finds him funny. So that's kind of their connection. And it's just good for them. They both enjoy each other's time. They have a good time with each other. So, Alonzo is a goal for her. She really likes him and he likes her. So, it's good. Patrice asked Alonzo, was he liking some of the new girls? And he was like, no, you still my number one. And they already established that they going on another date after this one. So, I think we got something going here for sure. (laughs) So, they end up having a fun night. Everything went really good. Everybody's uh, leaving, saying goodbye, but Vanessa stays back to have like some one-on-one time with Chaz and they're cuddled on the couch and just talking and making Google eyes at each other and holding hands. So yeah, that's a good one too. But Vanessa and Chaz have kind of been connecting since the first time they met each other. So this is starting to develop into Alexis and Will, Vanessa and Chaz, Alonzo and then you also have Rashina and Justin so it's starting to branch out and people are starting to figure out who they can rock with because of these more intimate conversations and romantic settings and I think this is just a game changer for real I think this really is going to shake things up with people who thought they had something going on so next up is maya maya is the 30 year old healthcare it consultant slash entrepreneur she has a brand that she's working on she has a waist trainer and she's doing a photo shoot for the waist trainer and she invited of all people <laughs> lamar why she invited lamar to come up and kind of you know, join her on her photo shoot because this is something that's important to her. So Maya's talking to Lamar about relationships and does he have a type? And she's saying, and he's saying, no, I don't have a type. If you go back and look at everybody I dated, there's nothing that is similar amongst them. They all look different. And she was like, well, because basically for him, it's the physical appearance. And she's saying, Yes, I want to be attracted to my partner, but physical appearance is not all that there is. Once we peel back that layer, I want to be able to have conversations with them. I want to know that they're emotionally mature. And he goes right back to, well, sex is really important to me. He can't help himself. This man cannot help himself. And I don't think he's going to change up with regards to this like this is all he talks about that's it and she's just over it she's literally ready to end the day because he cannot get his brain off of anything other than sex she literally says i'm gonna go ahead and go back to my photo shoot she can't take any more conversation about him and the threesomes he's had the pleasure of partaking in lamar is not ready He's not ready 
it will be a long time before this man is ready for a serious relationship. If you see Lamar on the streets of Fort Worth, Texas, Dallas, Texas, hell, Houston, run. So because the date with Lamar was such a disaster, Maya's giving it a go again. So she invites out Mika, Jonathan, and Laron. And they're going to uh, one of her favorite spots in town that she likes to go to. And when they come in, Laron says, this is one of my favorite spots too. So they both actually hang out in this place on their own. I guess they just never crossed paths, you know, until now. But they're all there. As you know, Mika and Jonathan have a history because Mika was the one who was meeting with Jonathan saying, you know, have you circled back and, you know, circled the block with your baby mama? And he said that he had done that at some point. And she said, kind of dismissed him as, oh, baby mama drama. And so she was suspicious of Jonathan way back when they first kind of met because he said he had circled back and kind of, you know, got back into an intimate situation with, she said, baby's mama. And uh, he did not say the word baby's mama, but basically his ex which is something some people do. It's not something I do. I'll never go back and tap them. But that's like, if that's something that, you know, people do, that's what they do. If I'm not done, I'm not going to make you my ex. But once we're done, we're done. Done, done. Now, Laurent says the, the relationship we has, he has with Cole, which is Koshia. He doesn't think anybody's going to beat that. So he's here, he's showing up, he's just, you know playing along to get along but Koshia he's he's 100% solid on that <laughs> that's how he comes in to the date okay so Mika of course is asking Laron about his party boy lifestyle and I just find this to be negative I think it's negative to say he has a party boy lifestyle he's single he doesn't have any children so what else is he gonna be doing you know what I mean just sitting at home watching paint dry he is going to go out and he's going to be social, but he gets the opportunity to explain in the setting, no, you know, that's not all I do. And when I'm married, I want to have kids over to the house and invite the neighbors over and we go and we cook out and we grill. He said, I can do other things, but right now this is what I'm doing. And I get that a thousand percent. I don't know why anyone would have an issue with him and his lifestyle being that he's a very well off, he has a good job, single man, in a nice popping city. Like, what is he supposed to be doing? He's going to go out. That's his way of being social. So after that, Mika asked about soulmates. Do you believe that you get one true soulmate in life? Jonathan says no. And um, Lamont said, it's a no for me, dog. And so then Maya asked Jonathan, you know, even with you have been married before with your ex-wife, and Mika's like, wait a minute, ex-wife? You didn't tell me you had an ex-wife. You said your baby mama, and he corrected her. He said, I never said those words. She used the word baby mom when talking to him about the mother of his children. He never said the word baby mom. And he basically goes on to, you know, say that, yeah, he had been married previously. And they're going to discuss it more once they split as a group. And so Laron and Maya are going to pair off. And then Jonathan and Mika are going to pair off to further kind of discuss where they picked out. Because, of course, Mika has issues that he never told her he was married. So Jonathan says to her, listen, I'm moving forward. I'm trying to talk about my future. I don't want to talk about my past. I want to talk about what's going to happen in the future, which is a thousand percent correct. Mika tends to want to know more about his exes and his past relationships than she wants to know about who he is right now in the present. And he's not into that. When she first had a conversation with him and asked about him circling the block with his ex, she had a, a feeling that he was being untruthful and he had baby mama drama. Well, now that she knows he did not have baby mama drama, that was his ex-wife, right? He was married. Now she has a problem with him because he didn't tell her he was married. And he said he didn't tell her he was married because he's not interested in divulging all that information about his past. Now, is she warranted in, in, in being like that? That's a red flag for her. It depends. 
if she has issues that she has that she's dealing with with insecurities she has and that makes her feel uncomfortable then that will be a red flag for her but for another person who i believe would be more secure in themselves and is really trying to know who jonathan is right now I don't think that's something to be worried about in this moment. You're just getting to know each other. If someone is on some bullshit and they're dating their ex, they're sleeping with their ex, all these things are happening, that'll come out in due time. But I don't think someone's saying to you that they have an ex-wife. And if you ask if they've ever went back and slept with the ex-wife and they tell you, yeah, then you shouldn't be uncomfortable about that. You shouldn't ask. If it's going to make you uncomfortable and you really don't want to know the truth, don't ask the question. Because whether he slept with her or not back in the day doesn't matter. If you guys enter into a committed relationship, what he needs to understand is it's unacceptable to you for him to sleep with anyone else once you all decide to be committed to each other. No need to worry about what he did before. Everybody's grown. Everybody slept with somebody prior to getting with you. We too old. But... Once we commit, are you going to be faithful in a relationship with me? Are you committed to only having sex with me? That's where you should be. So that's the whole reason why he doesn't understand why she wants to keep talking about the past and neither do I. It doesn't matter. Meeting where he's at. Who he was back then is likely not who he is in this moment because right now he's saying, I want something more. I'm ready for love. I'm ready for a relationship. He wouldn't be here if she was what he wanted. And for Jonathan, Mika is a red flag. She's too concerned with looking back. She's not concerned with looking forward. And Mika, honestly, is one of the people on the show. I don't see who she connects with. I don't see where that she's made a connection with anyone. She's just kind of out here floating because she's never meeting people where they are and she's never delving into how can we mesh together how do we fit she's always talking about the past so she's not making connections right now in the moment so Mika is asking you know Jonathan like what are you looking for in a woman and she feels like it's important that you know men really say what they mean and you know because A lot of men, you can't figure out what's going on with them because they don't really communicate. And she was like, because I thought when we were talking, you were just talking about a girlfriend. And he says, I get what you're saying. But then, you know, in his confessional, he's saying like a lot of women have issues with the man if you tell them that you've been divorced. So he didn't disclose that and he didn't lead with it because he didn't want to basically scare people off and have people feel that he's a particular type of way just because he was married once and it didn't work. He didn't want them to assume that that meant something was wrong with him because his marriage didn't work. So I get it. I just feel like if that's the type of situation that is intimidating to you, don't get into it. I'm not sure that Jonathan and Mika are a good match. If I was, you know, I wouldn't delve into Mika if I was Jonathan because it just seems too complicated to begin with and it should be an easier kind of flow then you have Maya and Laron they're talking and it's just flowing it's just a, a very cool conversation they're both talking about their wants their needs kind of their desire to be this power couple they're both she's a healthcare IT consultant he's in IT they both have great careers lucrative careers they can see that he that he can see himself fitting with her and she can see herself fitting with him and that's shocking to Laron because he thought Koshia was it right he thought that was it for him but now that he's met up with Maya they hang out the same she doesn't find his current lifestyle to be anything that's unusual because she may not be out Wednesday through Sunday but she out a lot because her spot is his spot his spot is her spot So it just makes sense. And he can see himself vibing with her, which is dope. Because honestly, I didn't want him stuck on Koshia. I just, Koshia, I think Maya's a better fit. And LeBron, in his confessional, he's saying, listen, me and Maya could be a a beautiful couple. I'm making money. She making money. We both on our grind. We both look good. Like, she's perfect. He literally says out of his mouth, she's 
perfect. I think Koshia got a problem. <laughs> okay, Tommy may have been onto something with these getting intimate dates in the beginning of the show. This is going to be interesting because now they got all this time to build. It's great. So Laron asked my, what you looking for? She said, I'm looking for a provider. She said, I'm looking for a husband, somebody who wants to get to know me. He said, you looking for a husband? He said, I want to marry you. You want to marry me? <laughs> okay. Listen, he ready to go. This is what I'm talking about. He's, he like, he was not talking about marrying Koshia. This is, this is different. And so this is exactly what I mean by saying when, when you in there and you tapped in and you really doing the work, you doing what you're supposed to do, that stuff come quick. It don't take forever for you to figure that out. It does not. If you engage for like six, seven years and that man ain't proposed to you, that that's not your husband, honey. Listen, you wasting your time. <laughs> you wasting your time, ma'am. No, that's not what it is. When you know, he know, it don't take no long time. And I'm telling you, you ain't got to know everything about the person before you marry them. That's according, that's what the honeymoon period is for. That's what all that is for. When you get married, you are still learning the person that you have committed to. You're still learning them. You learn them. It's it, it's not that you come into it knowing everything. You're learning. But have some faith in yourself. Have some faith in your, your trust and your love. Have faith in that. That you'll get it right. And have faith that if you get it wrong, guess what? <laughs> You can divorce the ass. Trust me. You can it's, listen. 90 days. You good. I'm trying to tell you, like, do not be, don't be stuck on stupid. Like, put yourself in a space of pure feeling, pure vulnerability, pure. Like, it has to be pure. You can't be out on the bullshit. You can't be trying to come up. You can't be doing all that. It has to be a pure space of just wanting to know, love, and grow with the person. And you got to be in prayer. You got to pray about it. Like if you have to ask God to protect you, order your steps, make sure you're doing what you're supposed to do. And if you mess up, tell them to fix it. You hear me? Like everybody don't get this right. Fix it. Fix it for me. You ask for that because sometimes we make mistakes, but he can fix all that. And nobody's perfect. People are imperfect human beings. If you marry somebody thinking you about to, Marry a person who walks on water, girl, bye. That's not going to happen. They don't do that because we're humans. Everybody messes up. The degree to which they do that depends on you and what your standards are and what you ask for and who the person is that you marry. And whatever another person does ain't always on you. It is not a reflection of you if they mess up. Like, that's not on you. So you got to just be open and vulnerable and you got to have faith and you got to trust. And that's very hard for people to do. But Maya already asked this man, listen, she told him she wanted to be married. Now he asked him before the end of the day, can he marry her? Now he's ready. He stay on ready. He stay on go. And he says, she says, we need to have another date like soon we don't need a long time for this to go by we need to date like soon and he's like i'm willing to date you whenever basically you got time he's like listen you got time tomorrow i'm there tomorrow you got time two days i'm there in two days that's what i'm talking about it's honesty they're open they're talking to each other with pure intention and it, it he's wide open and so is she that right there boom that's ready for love that's what it is and it can take a minute and it can take six months you never know it just depends on when people choose to open up and let the other person in and that's all it's about you got to be vulnerable you got to put yourself out there you got to take risk you got to trust none of that is easy it's hard as hell to do but if you do it the payoff is great and that's what I think. I think that's what is happening in this moment. And she's saying, this is what it's about. I want a partnership. And he's like, listen, if I'm making X and you making Y, we double it up together. He's like, we could be a power couple. He can clearly see himself stepping in the role that she laid out. She painted a picture he can see himself in. And it's as simple as that, y'all. When you talking to people, don't, I want a baller. I want this. I want a man who make a man. Don't do that stupid stuff. That's not, come on. You ain't a baller, so you don't 
that's not the picture you're painting because you don't even know what a baller's life looks like. Paint your picture and give them space to fit into the picture and they will put themselves in the picture. They'll, they'll, they'll fix the ending of the story for you if you give them space to do it. Men want to be all these things to us. They want to be that. They, the black men want to be our saviors. They want to fix our problems. They want to help. They want to do everything we think a man should do. But they don't know how to do that because we don't tell them. Paint the picture. Tell your story. Tell it. Don't, be, don't front. Don't make, don't put no extra sauce on it. Just tell the picture right there in the moment where you are. What do you need in that moment? Who is the person that can help you in that moment? Do that. And a lot more people would be a lot happier if they were honest with themselves and they were honest with the person that they're dating. A lot of people are dating people who can be who they need their husbands to be. Their expectations are unrealistic. They're asking for things that are not even what is needed in the moment for them. You know, it's like be realistic about who you are and where you are, where you are. If you ain't making six figures, why do you need your man to make six figures? You know what I mean? If you ain't owning a company and an entrepreneur and have a successful business, then why do you need that from somebody you're dating? You, How do you know how to be a partner to that? It's crazy what people are asking for versus what they really need. So all I'm saying is be realistic and be honest with yourself and, and, and be true. And when you, when you get what you think you want, don't shut it down because you're scared to hear somebody's ready to give it to you. If somebody's ready to give it to you and you asked for that and you prayed for that, there's no turning back. You won't go. You ready, set. That's it. You, you got to put your foot to the pedal. You got to go now. It can't take forever. You got to do it. The blessing is in the moment. You got to do it and you got to do it now. So when they say, are you ready for love? You really have to be ready because your blessing can come overnight. And if it come overnight, you got to be able to react that soon. Because the person you getting blessed with, they, they expecting an answer ASAP. <laughs> Are you ready to give people the answer? And most people are not. It's not always that you don't get blessed with what you want or you can't find what you want. Half the time, people find exactly what they want. They just not ready to receive it. And that's crazy. So the next final scene is they're at the lounge again and Tommy is talking to Leyland. And Leyland is saying, listen, I've had a week off. I'm still not ready. I'm still going through things with my family and I'm not in the moment right now. I got to step out of this. I'm not ready for love. I, something has happened in my life and I'm not ready. I don't believe you should have left. I think life happens to all of us. It doesn't change anything. Two things can be true at once. You can be ready for love and life could be happening to you. And the person in that room that you're looking to love, you can be able to help you with what ha- what is happening in your life. I think she should have opened up about what was happening and she should have put it out there. And I think she should have stayed in the process. I think Leyland was somebody that all these men were checking for. She's absolutely drop dead gorgeous. She's easy to get along with. She was easy. She was easy for as far as ready for love. I didn't see no issues with her. So whatever popped up, Life happens to people. Just share what is happening to you in life with other people. And it may have been hard and she may have felt like, oh, I got to deal with this because she might be used to handling problems on her own. And I get that. Some of us are just from broken situations where we got to step up and step into roles that we have had to carry for a long time. Not that it's normal. Not that it's what that, that does not mean that's what God has in store for us. That's a role that we used to playing. I think she's on this show so she doesn't have to carry such a heavy load alone. And I think if she had just opened up and been vulnerable about what's vulnerable about what was happening in her life, she would have been okay. And this could have been an outlet for her. This could have been I'm fighting and I'm going through shit on three days a week and on three other days a week. I have support and I have somebody I can talk to and I have somebody I can lean into and I have a place to, you know, just lay down and 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 be vulnerable and get a hug i don't know i can see both sides of this but i really wish she had a state in the process because she's a beautiful person and i think that she was in in fact like 
ready. I think she was ready. I think she had done the work, but I think she thinks that she has to fight huge battles alone. And that's not what being ready for love is. When you're ready for love, you're ready to have someone take on those battles with you. With. You ain't doing anything by yourself. You're not alone anymore. You're doing everything with someone else. And, you know, you got to be ready to open up and do that. And I think she's just solely fixed on solving that problem. And it may be a critical problem. It could be somebody's mental. It could be somebody's health. It could be it could be a, a situation that is dire. And even in dire situations, that's what love is. You don't have to do it alone. You do it with help. That's what it's about. So hate to see her go. I hope she comes back and I hope she finishes this process at a later time. But at this moment, she has to go home. So now that Leilin is gone, he tells him, like, listen, I want to hear about what's happening in your week. And he's like, Patrice, you've been smiling the whole time. What's going on? And she's still, she's like, I still put Alonzo at the top of my list. He wants to be a protector. He wants to take care of. He makes me laugh. She just reads off all the things about Alonzo that makes her happy. And so no matter what anyone else felt about Alonzo or whatever issues they have with Alonzo, it's not true for her. She really likes Alonzo. She's happy. She's in the moment. And I'm happy for Patrice. I hope her and Alonzo work out well. So Maya talks about the great conversation that she had with Laron and that her, her eyes are open and she's starting to see Laron in a different manner. Koshia immediately steps up and was like, well, I never saw him as a party guy. And I always understood that he was just doing what he's supposed to do in this moment. I agree with what Koshia is saying. Everything out her mouth, I 100% agree with. I don't agree with the delivery. My issue with Koshia is her delivery. I'm not opposed to what she's saying. I agree with what she's saying. And she's right, in my opinion, on a lot of things, but she is so confrontational. And it's always like, you know, are you Koshia or are you diamond ready to knuck if you buck? Like, what are we doing? Like, are you all ready to love her? Are you like in a, I don't know, a cage fight? She's just always ready to go. She's ready to fight. She's aggressive as hell. And I just feel like for men, that's not acceptable. So like, why is it acceptable for women? Just because she's beautiful? She has a gorgeous shape. She is, her her mindset is on point. Like everything out her mouth is right. It's something about her delivery and her attitude that is just off-putting. And if it's just me, let me know. Drop it in the comments. Let me know what I'm missing, you know? I But I just don't understand her, her aggression. I don't get it. So it comes to Rashina and she says, I have to say, Mr. Justin, the new guy, when it comes to Justin, she talks about their date. She talks about the date, how he felt with her, being older, having children, how sweet he was, and that he's okay with, you know, her having children and him not. And she just, she's really receptive to what transpired on the day. And I, I think that's wonderful. She was very smart about honing in on the new guy, fresh meat, so to speak, and just really seeking out that additional opportunity. I think she's the only one who did it, or she's the only one who they showed on film doing that, and it paid out for her. So good shout out to Rashida. Now Tommy goes to Mika, and she says, Dominique, I haven't seen Dominique, like physically seen him on this show since the first mixer. So I'm trying to figure out, I forgot about Dominique to be honest, like is he still on the show? Cause we have not physically seen him. Is he still here? Is he still on the show? Where where has he been? I haven't seen Mika interact with Dominique since the first mixer. And I haven't seen him. I don't know. Like, I got to pay close attention and try to see where he is. But he was not on this episode at all. So I need to start checking for Dominique because I have not seen him since the first mixer. And that was Mika's only connection. So I need to know what's going on with him and where he's at. Alexis says, Will. Will's on her radar. She gets along with Will. They show her and Will the day kind of vibing. And so Alexis is 100% checking for Will. She says that Will is intentional. They talk every day and she's really impressed by him. So for Alexis, Will is where it's at. And of course, Vanessa says Chaz is her top connection. She likes Chaz. She's, this girl is smiling from ear to ear. It's like how do you get your smile that big? That's how much she likes Chaz. Like, 
they have made a connection from jump and I think this is a go. I mean, instantly they connected and it's withheld the test of time thus far. So I'm really interested to see where Vanessa and Chaz go. Because Vanessa's a hard nut to crack. She was very reserved. Like she was not opening up to a lot of people. But Chaz just walked right in. And it's amazing. So now they're talking about who they're not connected with. So, you know, he goes to Mika first. And Mika is not connecting at all with Jonathan. And if you notice, nobody else said their connection was Jonathan. Maybe Mika was on to something. Maybe all of her red flags, all of her like tapping in was just intuition and she was on point nobody said that they were into Jonathan and Mika's saying the person that you know she's really not into and she's not checking for is Jonathan when Mika mentioned that she brought up his relationship at the brunch and he never mentioned he was married a lot of women were taken aback by that and so I don't know what's going on with Jonathan but he's gonna have to step it up or he'll be like out of here because his his name is not coming out of anybody's mouth He's not vibing with anyone. Lamar, Maya was mentioned Lamar because he came in on her photo shoot when she was shooting her content for a brand and all he talked about was sex and she didn't like that. And so for Maya, she's not vibing with Lamar. Next is Alexis and she's not feeling Lamar. He's too aggressive for her, period. Like he comes on too strong, she's not feeling it. Next is Vanessa. She didn't mention the sex talk but she said he's just very set in who is he, who he is, and he's not very interested in who she is. Lamar is all about, you're going to have to be able to do this for me. You're going to have to do this for me. You're going to have to do this for me. He feels heavy like an additional job. And so Vanessa wasn't checking for Lamar either. Rashina, not checking for Lamar. He took her left because he was talking to her on their date about threesomes and wanting to have an additional woman in a relationship. Like, that's not her, what she's looking for. So for her... Lamar's not it. But Rashina also mentioned Will. She said his conversation is just blah. There's no connection. She she finds no spark in that communication. And so for her, it's Lamar and Will. Rashina is here and she's putting in work. And not only is she identifying what she wants, she is very clear on what she, what she does not. Patrice also says Will. And she said he, he had called her and he was talking about leaving his apartment and he was going to get covers because he had to sleep on the floor. Now, for women at this age, that is not appropriate. So if you're saying that a man is sleeping on the floor and you are a woman in your 30s and 40s, you're not checking for that. You don't want that. We've had enough time to establish yourself beyond sleeping on floors. Unless it's like a critical emergency, you know, you lost your job, you lost everything, then people can understand that. But as a single man who is in his 30s and 40s, not nobody should be sleeping on the floor. You should be well established beyond any, that is something you do in your early 20s. That is not something you do in your 30s and 40s. There should be no floors that you're sleeping on anywhere ever, no. Then Koshia jumps, jumps in. Girl, he gonna make you a pallet on the floor and since the mixer, Will has made me feel com- uncomfortable. He's pushy, he's aggressive. He grabbed my phone, he put his number in my phone. Okay, Koshia, here we go. You know, like, here we go, Koshia. She's always popping off. And it's just, it's a lot. I don't care that you're an attractive woman. I don't care that you feel you have your stuff together. She is a lot to handle. And I know 100% why Koshia is single. I, I get it. <laughs> Then she says through conversation, it was pointed out to her that Lexi had revealed things that were conversated about in the lounge, which Tommy told them, do not take stuff that we talk about from the lounge back out to people. What happens in the lounge stays in the lounge. So if Lexi is taking those conversations back to people, that's wrong because she agreed that that was going to be a safe space and nobody should do that. You know, that's, it's not playing fair. You know, and so Koshi is upset about it. So she turns to Lexi and she starts to dig in. However, Lexi ain't no punk. Lexi's like, she's right back at it. Lexi comes right back at her and she starts off by calling her the wrong name. And she's like, first of all, my name is Koshia. And then it just goes left. Lexi is saying that she believes Will has the right to paint his own picture as to who he is and he does not need to be seen as a perpetrator and then Koshia and Mika are saying well we didn't say that he was a perpetrator or pervert you said that and then Koshia is talking about if she slaps the bitch in her face 
Koshia took it to a whole nother level that it did not need to go to. But Alexa said, if that's what you want to do, we can do that. And I'm here for that. Like, I don't know who Koshia thinks she is, but honey, if you want to pop, get active. Activate. Trust. You bring your ass across that room, I'm going to lay you flat on your ass. So, I don't know who she thinks she is, but honey, read the room. Ain't nobody scared of you and ain't nobody checking for you. If you want to get activated, you do that. But trust and believe there's something coming on the other side of that reaction. And then she hops her ass up and runs out crying. This is why this woman ain't ready for love. This is why she's gorgeous, but not married. Aesthetically, on the outside, she is gorgeous. But something is wrong with her personality. No one wants this much heat all the time. She needs some counseling. She needs to figure out how to chill the hell out. She does a lot. A lot. But no reason. And I understand that your birth order. I understand you're the baby. But you're not a baby. You're a 30-year-old woman and you need to act like it. And nobody's about to walk around catering and babying you. Grow the fuck up. And Alexis is like, she has a problem with every man. Every man is coming her sideways. Every man is coming at her section. Because she is like, who's every man? Every man is Will. You had an issue with Alonzo. You have an issue with Lamar. Like, I don't want you to be shocked when she says every man. Every man is not every man on the show. But you have thus far had issues with a lot of people. And you cannot pretend that you do not pop off. You do not get up and you don't storm off. Like, there's issues there with you. You're clashing with multiple people. And Alexis is like, that's not my experience. I feel like men know who to play with. And Koshia says to Alexis, I can't help that you built like a 12-year-old. Alexis is not built like a 12-year-old. Alexis has a very thin build. She's not big and hippie and big-breasted. and She doesn't have this wide ass on her. She's a thin-built woman, but she's a gorgeous woman. And for Koshia to attack her physicality is low it's just low vibrational is it's silly you know people who do that ain't got nothing else coming behind it and that's what they want to they they always want to attack someone's looks alexis is a beautiful woman so koshia may not be under to, able to understand the difference in the beauty because she's all about you know the hips and the butt and the boobs and you know, but and that's fine if that's what she wants to be about. That's not Alexis. Alexis doesn't feel like she has to do all that because she can stand on her own. She can hold a conversation and pull just as much as Koshia without having to do everything with the physicality side of it. But what I love about it is Alexis didn't even respond to that. She let it roll off her shoulders like, girl, okay. She didn't even respond to it because she's not intimidated about what Koshia is saying. Alexis is a solid female who knows what she wants and she is not moved by Koshia's bullshit at all. <laughs> Should Alexis have took this conversation out of the lounge? No, we wouldn't even be here if she didn't. She should have kept it in the lounge like Tommy asked her to do. But if she is talking to Will about changing your behavior because it's being perceived in a certain way and she likes him, I can understand why she did it. She is trying to keep him in the in the game, so to speak. She likes him, and she doesn't want him to go home. And that's why she's defending him. And so the meetings the following night is going to be Alexis and Will, and it's going to be Lamar, and it's going to be Koshia. And they're going to tell the men about the women's decision regarding them being ready for love. So Will's happy to see Alexis. He comes in, he had a stressful work day. He's telling her about, you know, a deal that he has that he's worried about and she said you know what's for you is for you right and he's like absolutely i love her vibe like she's like listen you got this she's very supportive the next uh date is lamar and koshia and the minute lamar sees it is koshia he's just not happy about having to meet her on a date he does not he's not he doesn't vibe with koshia so it flips to Alexis and Will, and she's telling them, a lot of the women feel you're too much into your lustful energy. Like, women are not receptive to that. They don't, they're not feeling it. And he seems a little shocked by that, which is interesting to me. Like, I see now that some of these men don't realize how they're coming off when they're doing what they're doing. I don't know what the reaction is that they were hoping for, but women just don't, they're not receiving that. That's not cute, you know? Pull it back. 
will it end? Then she mentioned that another woman said you were about to lay on the floor and go to sleep. Now his reaction to that is, oh, they wrong and I, that's not what I'm talking about. He never said he didn't say that and he never elaborated on the situation she was talking about. In his mind, he should have been able to go right back to the conversation who he was having the conversation with. Now, I don't, I'm not sure about editing, but he never popped right back to that conversation. And if you can't figure out who you were talking about when you said it, that means you've been getting covers and about to go to sleep on the phone with a couple of people. Are you sleeping on the floor or not? And if you are sleeping on the floor, why is that? That's what I would have asked. Like, if you sleeping on the floor, how are you on a show that says ready to love? If you are a man and your finances are not in order and you sleeping on floors, you ain't ready to love nobody because you can't love yourself enough to get your ass off that floor, okay? So then it flips to Koshia and Lamar and she's telling him a lot of women thought your conversation was too risque. He's like, what are we talking about? Risque, we grown. And she's like, it was too soon. It was just, you know, too sexual. And he's like, but we grown. He's like, he feels it totally appropriate to have the conversations that he's having. He's not hearing the fact that women who are in his age group are not receptive to that behavior. He's not willing to change his behavior to have a better relationship with the women that he is supposedly seeking. So in that respect, like he's not ready to love, at at least not this group of women. You know, there may be a group of women who's open to that, but it's not this group. Now, Alexis tells Will, it's kind of coming off that you're not maybe as financially stable as you led on to be. And he's like, that's bullshit. I ain't never slept on the floor. I don't believe him. I don't know why I don't believe him. I do not believe him. I think he's lying. I think he's lying through his teeth. I don't believe him. I think he told somebody, Patrice, that. And I think there are instances where he has slept on the floor. Now, was it a one-off maybe but if it was a one-off he would remember sleeping on the floor and he would have just spoke to that moment the fact that he didn't speak to sleeping on the floor he acted like he didn't recall it and then he's talking about how he gonna prove everybody wrong and all this I just it's something there and I don't I don't I don't I don't believe him and it looks like Alexis believes him but I don't know why. <laughs> Am I tripping? Like, listen, this could be my Mika moment. This could be just me being too suspicious of him or whatever, but I just feel like it's something to this. A man at his age sleeping on the floor would stand out to anyone. And if he did sleep on the floor, it should be a, a justification for it. Are you staging a house overnight and you slept in the house just so you could finish the job and get it done on time? Or were you you know are you sleeping on the floor do you got a bed (laughs) do you have furniture like this conversation needs to be way different it needs to be boom 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 ask the incremental questions so you can get to what's going on and alexis is not there she's just really trying to give this overall kind of statement about what's happening with the group and how they feel about him so it flips back to Lamar and Koshia, and he's saying, I need women to be open about what they really want. You know, I'm here, I'm being myself. And she's like, if I can pause you, I can't speak for every woman. He's like, you just did, which she did. She's speaking for the group, telling him that they don't want him there because he's too, you know, risque in his conversation. Like she's totally speaking for the group. It's weird. I don't know what she's talking about. But at the end of the day, it turns out Will is still ready for love and Lamar is not. I'm not shocked by that. This was the best decision the women could have made. Lamar is not ready for love, in my opinion. Lamar is ready for rendezvous and sexual escapades. Love is not why this man is here. And if he is ready for love and he thinks love comes into a package of a threesome, maybe it's just, this is the wrong show for him to be on. Like, I don't know what he's doing. So that's how it ended. Uh, Lamar tried to get a little aggressive with Koshia after she told him, but she basically just got up and left. This is, it's a pattern with her. She likes the idea of getting up and walking away from people when they're talking. She gets some kind of rocks off when she does that. She likes getting up and walking away from people. I think it all like stems right back to the being of the baby. It's a certain amount of attention that she feels like she needs and she likes the attention that she gets when she walks out. So girl, listen. But that's how it went. I am starting to form my opinion of the couples that I think that will do good together. Chaz and Vanessa, I think they're looking good together. 
I think that you have something good with Laron and Maya. I think that there is something good that is popping off between Rashina and Justin. I'm not sure about Mika and what she's doing. I'm not sure about Will and Alexis. And it's not because I don't have, you know, an appreciation and a love for Alexis. I really do. But I think Will is not quite ready. We'll see how it goes. You know, like we're going to keep... We go, I'm not sure about Alexis uh, or I'm not sure about Alonzo and Patrice either. Alonzo to me looks, seems a little immature, but we'll see. We're going to keep watching. But what we do know is this getting intimate, putting the intimacy uh, test in the front of these episodes might be a really good move for Ready for Love because it's delving into can we form a connection a lot earlier in the process and now they can just build on that so i am so excited to see where it goes from here what do y'all think who do you think is going to like formulate into a really good couple do you see sparks flying between anyone who are you rooting for drop me some comments like the video share the video subscribe to the channel and i will talk to y'all next week for ready to love episode five have a good one Get out the way. Who got a watch? Who got the time? I'm raising the clock. Even if my feelings grind, don't stop. Got big dreams.